Hi guys, welcome to this Tulips watercolour step-by-step tutorial. So, shall we get started? I'm going to be using this concertina sketchbook. I'll have a link in the description below where you can purchase this sketchbook. The sketchbook's 140 grams. It's a cold pressed surface and it's got 70 possible working surfaces. It comes in a really cool sort of case and to protect the sketchbook. So I'm just sliding out the sketchbook here and the case feels nice and solid. And I'm just opening up the sketchbook here. And as you can see, um, the concertina action here, um, as I pull it out, it's great for display. As you can imagine, pulling the whole thing out with your paintings on there, it would look fabulous. And as you can see here, each page has two 140 grams sheets of paper joined together for stability as well. And I like the fact then you're not actually physically painting the back of a painting it's a separate sheet of paper so just to say a big thank you to Chris from my Patreon membership for letting me know about this amazing sketchbook so I thought it'd be a really great challenge to fill this sketchbook with lots of different variety of flowers. I think it would look amazing when it's finished, this sketchbook, to actually pull out the concertina sketchbook as a display of lots of different flowers. And if you have any suggestions for your favourite flowers, please put those in the comments section below and I'll try to include them as best I can. And why not join me in this challenge? It doesn't have to be a sketchbook or a concertina sketchbook book but it's just that challenge of painting lots of different flowers really exploring different techniques different varieties and just having lots of fun and for those of you on instagram why not share your work at karen rice watercolor a link for that can be found in the description below i'm mixing up a little bit of bright red here and the yellow and sort of pushing the red into the yellow sort of wet into wet there but just sort of really sort of having fun just sort of painting with watercolor not worrying too much here still using my size 8 brush really sort of loaded the brush with some red here as you can see you can see that paint traveling into the yellow there so you get some beautiful effects here what I quite like about this cold press sketching sort of watercolor paper is it's a little bit different from the paper I usually use and I quite like it you can you can see how I'm almost immediately getting backgrounds there but I sort of quite like that for watercolor painting of flowers in this sketchbook um, there's no pressure here I can just play around and see what happens so I've mixed up a little bit more of the bright red in here with a little puddle of water there. So it's quite watery. I'm sort of almost breaking all the rules here, doing all the things I tell you not to do. But when you're using a sketchbook, it's quite nice just to experiment. So I'm just dropping in a lot of really watery red paint there and letting it run down. So it's quite sort of brighter at the top there and just working my way around to the right hand side here and coming downwards there so it's quite pale and I'm just getting a little bit more of the Indian yellow here and it's slightly creamy and just dropping it in wet into wet at the bottom of the tulip there still using my size 8 brush it's quite nice to have a simple composition like this just two tulips a couple of the top of the leaves there there's no pressure and it's great especially if you're starting out in watercolor or you've not really painted that many flowers you can just play around in your sketchbook and you don't feel this sort of tightening up because it's a white piece of paper and you're worried about spoiling it what I'm doing here is I'm just still using my size 8 brush and I'm just dropping in alizarin crimson which is a great sort of coolish dark red color and um, which is great for painting shadow colors um, on red flowers so I've mixed up a little bit of phthalo green light with a touch of the yellow there and I'm painting the stem wet on dry but I'm sort of touching the bottom of the tulip there so some of that yellow has come down as well so I'm painting the leaf now straight over the stem actually because I'm going to actually paint some shadow on the stem later so it's a lovely sort of bright green color this is a little bit of Daniel Smith's 
green appetite genuine because I've almost run out of my forest green there and I love this color so it's quite a nice me middle green tonally so and it creates some lovely textures but you if you don't have this you can use something like sap green or make your own green using a little bit of ultramarine and yellow and for those of you that would like a little bit of practice of mixing greens and learn a little bit more about mixing colors in watercolor I'll put a link in the description below of a tutorial I made all about mixing greens and also another tutorial about just color mixing in general so I hope you find that helpful so I've mixed up some creamy green appetite genuine here again you can use sap green or hookers green and I'm painting it damp into damp with my size 8 brush so that's the paints quite creamy and the surface isn't too wet but there's still a sheen on the surface I've actually just dropped some water in there as well so I'm hoping to get a little bit of a back run there later as you can see I've got a back run and the top left petal there and that's where the wet wash um, or water is dropped into a drying wash and that's when the shine of the paint is just about to disappear I'm using a little bit of red here with my size 4 brush and the paper has really dried quite quickly it might be because it's thinner paper as well that I normally use which is quite nice in a way so I've not had to do any blow drying so there's some damp parts but I quite like it because there's some happy accents but I paint a little bit of shading right in the middle of the tulip there with some bright red and a touch of alizarin so I'm painting the right hand tulip now painting some of the Indian yellow at the bottom you can use cadmium yellow and in the description below I'll have a full list of the colors that I've used in this tutorial with color alternatives as well so I'm just painting a little bit of that phthalo green light there but you can use cerulean and yellow and I'm actually using cobalt violet light but you could use cerulean mixed with a touch of permanent rose for this gorgeous color here so I've applied it wet on dry and I've just used a clean damp brush to blend it out a little and now I'm using a little bit more of that cobalt violet light and I'm just dropping that in to the sort of petal of the tulip there wet on dry but also in the damp areas as well just trying to vary the sort of tonal value so where it's wet it goes lighter and where it's dry it's slightly darker because you're not diluting the paint as much I'm also looking for a few happy accidents as well um, because as you can see on that top left tulip now the red tulip um, you've got some lovely back runs especially on the sort of left hand petal there and it just brings a little bit of life and texture to the tulip which I love so I'm just continuing on here just using this cobalt violet light I'm using my size 8 brush still and sort of working wet on dry as I say and a little bit of wet in wet in places as well As you saw there, I added some of the purple there, damp into damp on the sort of shadow side of the tulip there. It really is effective and a little bit more of the cobalt violet light with the purple painting sort of wet into wet at the top. You can see how it's all running down to create that lovely sort of effect. This is why I paint watercolor. I love all these magical effects. I'm using a little bit of green here. And it's really pretty much dried off at the bottom here. So I'm just painting some of that green apple appetite genuine wet on dry with my size 8 brush just softening with a damp brush there to paint a little bit more dark at the bottom of that stem there and I'm using a little bit more of that phthalo green light there painting wet on dry the leaf in the middle using my size 8 brush trying not to touch the other leaves leaving a little white sort of edge there um, if you're worried about that just allow each leaf to dry in between stages but if you want to and you you let them touch they sort of just bleed in together and sometimes you get a nice back run as well so I'm mixing up a little bit of burnt sienna here with some viridian which makes quite a nice color mix and I'm painting that 
damp into wet there with my size 8 brush adding a touch of ultramarine here just to create a little bit more shadow on this leaf here this is slightly creamier so it's damp into wet here just to create this shadow at the edge of the leaf and I've decided to do the same just on the leaf here just to the left so this is pretty much wet on dry it has really dried off this paper dries so quickly um, which is quite nice for these little flower studies probably not if I was painting a sort of a sky or something like that I'll be running out of time but it's lovely for this sort of sketching so um, I'm just dropping in a little bit more of this dark and as you can see it's kind of the negative spaces here and it brings out the positive shape of the stem so it's quite nice you're actually bringing this object forward or the stem forward by doing that and I love using this dark color here I'm using it at the bottom as well um, just to create some more dark here wet on dry rinsing my brush taking the excess water off and then just dropping in some water there just to soften that dark area there I'm painting in this dark leaf to the right here wet on dry I'm using some ultramarine and a touch of yellow and just really trying to get a lovely fine point at the top they're really working at that there I'm just painting a little bit of a light green wash here with my size 8 brush just behind the stem there so it's just a little bit more yellow in the green and I'm adding a little bit of the phthalo cyanin blue here it's a cold blue you can use Prussian blue with a touch of the quinacridone gold or even burnt sienna so you get a really lovely dark green and I'm just painting painting this wet on dry with my size 8 brush sort of just alongside this leaf in the middle here so it's a really sort of dark leaf there really take your time when you're painting dark washes and don't be afraid of them as you can see my purple tulip is still wet if you're worried about that bleeding onto the green do allow it to dry first so I think it's a good idea to allow my painting to dry and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mix the darks and the details it's easy to overwork your watercolor painting so really say to yourself less is more I'm using my size 4 brush I'm using some of the purple a little bit of that phthalo cyan in blue just to paint this dark you can use Payne's gray as well with a bit of purple and I've added a touch of the cobalt violet light here as well just mixing it up where you've got this sort of dark light between the petals so really take your time with these areas it makes such a difference and as you can see I've added a little bit more of that cobalt violet light there as well and just softening with a damp brush so it doesn't look it doesn't stand out too much but you've got that tonal value there I'm just softening here with my size 4 brush adding a touch more of the violet on the left hand side here and again adding lots and lots of water in the middle what the water does it pushes out those two colors and it really highlights them and you get these like crisp edge and it's got a little bit of tonal value there but also a nice thin dark edge and it really separates the petals so I'm just painting a little bit of orange at the bottom there using red and yellow and I'm going to add a little bit more of the lemon yellow pushing this creamy color up into that orange which is sort of shifting a little bit up into the violet color as well I'm using this limey sort of green color it's a phthalo green light with some yellow and just sort of painting this at the top of the stem and just softening down the stem as well using my size 4 brush so I've mixed up a little bit of the purple with a phthalo cyan in blue you can use Prussian blue and I'm just painting this dark now wet on dry just to show some of the detailing on the tulip here and I'm just painting a marks as well on the petal using this size 4 brush just to sort of bring it to life there's a little bit of shading in the middle there as well so I've painted that damp into damp so I want to paint some dark reds here so I'm using alizarin crimson with the bright red and I'm just painting the top part of this tulip here where there's lots of darks and details so I'm painting it wet on dry and I'll just soften it here and there it really is a case of less is more you don't want to overdo it just let that watercolor shine as well that underpainting a little bit more bright red here just at the bottom I'm using the paper towel to control the amount of paint on my brush sometimes 
sometimes you can have too much paint you put it on and you just can panic and this way you can control that amount of paint there again I just sort of rinsed off my brush I'm just using water to soften and dilute the paint as well so I'm just painting a little bit of dark down the left hand side of the stem here using a little bit of the green appetite genuine just softening again with a damp brush just to make sure I keep the light on the right hand side and it just makes it look a little bit more round that way when you soften that edge I'm just painting a little bit of the bright red now onto the surface of the left petal here with my size 8 brush starting off wet on dry and then sort of diluting as well with water here and there just to sort of blend it back I haven't gone for the really bright red tulip I sort of gone for this sort of paler sort of more orangey tulip as well um, so you don't always have to copy the photograph exactly use it as a source a reference and a source of inspiration and I'm just dropping in some creamier red here again at the top just to show some shadow and details here with my size 8 brush more damp into wet so the surface is very wet still but my paint is slightly thicker and this is alizarin crimson now so I'm really going for the darks on the left hand side the light coming from the right and just painting some of those marks on the petal damp into damp and just softening the bottom part here with a clean damp brush working on the right hand petal now wet on dry to begin with with a little bit of that bright red with my size 8 brush it's quite dilute I'm just really sort of looking at this little slight bit of shadow on the right petal here and just sort of painting wet on dry and then softening with a damp brush there just working my way down and actually really diluting towards the bottom to make sure it's paler just getting a little bit more this is called French vermilion here and just dropping this in wet into wet looking for a few more of those happy accidents there and just adding a little bit more red in again wet into wet just to finish off a really good tip to stop you overworking your paintings is to sign and date them that way you kind of saying to yourself I've finished because sometimes it's so easy to be tempted to paint one more brush stroke and before you know it you're 30 minutes into your painting and you've lost your light and that way it does help however it has given me time to assess to see if I need to do any more and I felt this purple tulip was a little bit underpainted not enough darks and details there I think I forgot to paint the darks so I'm just adding a little bit more here wet on dry then diluting with water and painting some dark on the left hand side of the stem and then softening with a clean damp brush so here is the finished painting and as you can see to the right is my next challenge which is a more of an open tulip so do look out for that tutorial I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial, not just the painting of these gorgeous tulips, but also having a look at that concertina sketchbook. And I really hope you're inspired to maybe have a go at painting some tulips and maybe even taking part in this challenge of mine. And if you have any suggestions for flowers, please put them in the comments section below. And if you'd like to see more tutorials like this, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel where you'll get updates of my latest tutorials. For those of you who want to learn more about watercolour, why not think about joining my Patreon membership? Details about that can be found on the top right hand corner of this screen or in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. Happy painting. Bye for now.